So I lost both my parents a few years back. And, you know, it's always kind of weird when uh, Mother's Day or Father's Day is approaching. Father's Day is approaching. So lately, I've just been thinking about my dad a whole lot. So I thought I'd make a video about him since I still, even in his death, like to tease him and make fun of him. Because my dad was funny and didn't know he was funny. I don't know. Everybody and their mother says that about their father. Like, my dad was a riot. No, my dad was seriously freaking funny and had no clue as to why he was. Maybe I'll give you a little insight. So, um, I don't know. Like, basically, my dad, uh, Mexican, uh, born in Texas. I mean, he didn't, like, hop over the border or anything like that. Was a Mexican who just seemed to despise every race, including his own. Like every race, the human race, basically, like any race that you can think of, my dad did not like. You know, the, well, that's a fucking a Polak for you. Well, that's a fucking a Mexican for you. Well, that's it's just whoever he was pissed off at at the moment. It was it, white people, anybody. Um, he was born in Texas. I he was born. I think he was one of like six or seven kids. I forgot, you know what. And all his brothers kind of have the same. I mean, kind of verbiage as he does. He sounds like if Ricky Ricardo got hit in the head by a two by four. Like, that kind of, like, he talks like that, which always entertained me. My dad was a good-looking guy. He looked a lot, and I could never, you know, get my finger on it until some other people pointed it out, that he looked like Al Pacino. And now that I look at him in pictures, I mean, when it's your dad, you don't, don't think of him as a, looking like a movie star or whatever, but he fucking looked like Al Pacino, just a little bit darker. My dad was a guy who was a hard worker. He worked probably from the time he was... 15, 16. My dad worked until he was 74 years old. He did a lot of things as far as um, repair work. He did a lot of like mechanical work. He worked in movie theaters all over the Chicagoland area, all over Illinois, repairing machines, repairing anything. That My dad could literally build anything. I still can't operate a screwdriver. My dad, when my mom got paralyzed, built her a ramp. My dad, I mean, could look at something that was broken and literally make it work again as to where I'm so fucking useless that if I break, you know, a fucking, the handle of a mop, I'm like, well, fuck it, the tape's not gonna work, I have to buy a new one. It was just, it is that kind of mentality that drove my dad batshit crazy. But my dad was probably one of the best men I ever knew in my entire life. Probably, definitely the hardest working guy I ever knew in entire, my entire life. And probably one of the unluckiest in the fact that, as I said before, I'm adopted and my brother's adopted. He got us as kids and I am so sorry that that happened to you because we put you through a lot of shit, mainly me, but that's just how he was. Um, why my dad was funny and the things that I think, I'm just going to say the random things that I remember about him. Um, my dad never thought I was funny. My dad didn't get humor, really. First off, let me say this. Let's just get this out of the way. Everyone and their mother, including my dad, thought he was Italian. Our last name could easily, easily, easily be construed as an Italian last name. So much so that, let's just say my last name's Cotton and got like a CIA type thing on the end. Um, if you say my last name in a certain way, it could be pronounced Chia or Sia or whatever the fuck. I, growing up, thought my teacher had some, because she had the biggest fucking teeth on the planet. I swear she had like Bucky Beaver teeth. I think she gnawed fucking logs at night for like a hobby. But I thought she was mispronouncing my name. I mean, just like she had some kind of like lisp, so I never said anything about it because I don't mean that much of a dick. Because she would always use the Chia version of my name, and a lot of other people did too. And so finally, somebody let me know, oh, they think you're Italian. Steve still thinks I'm Italian. I don't have one drop of Italian blood in me as far as I know. Although, like I said, I'm adopted. Anything's possible at the point. I got a lot of inbred in me. I know that and hillbilly and crazy. So let's put that all out there. But as far as 23andMe says, zero Italian. My dad thought he was Italian. My dad used Italian phrases. You capisce? You capisce? And he used this one that I didn't even think was a real thing called affinable. Affinable. For years, I thought my dad was just having a stroke. Whenever he would just look up in there and go, ah, blah, it, it would be like, let me use an example. You're using a screwdriver or something like that, and it slips out of your hand and then jams like into your aorta for some bizarre reason, some final destination way that it would never really happen. Like some kind of horrible thing happened. Ah, blah. I found out not even that long ago, I, it, I found out a while ago that it is something in Italian, but it literally means to go somewhere, like to, uh, literally to go to hell or to go to something. I don't know where my dad picked this up because he's not fucking Italian. My dad's never been Italian. He didn't grow up in an Italian household. I don't know why he thinks he's Italian, but everyone thought my dad was. I remember one time um, 
this woman saw me and she somehow remembered me as a kid. I think it was a teenager. She goes, oh, hey, how's your mom doing? I'm like, she's fine. She goes, she's still married to that Italian fella. I'm like, not unless she divorced my dad or is leading a double life. In that case, I have to blackmail her and get money. <laughs> so he thought he was and everybody else did too. Also from the fact that he fucking acted like it. He did a lot of this shit here. A lot of, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why is it every time you and your brother go outside and get the calls from neighbors about horrible things happening all over the place and I know it's you. Stop laughing at me. I, uh, my dad made more grunting noises just having to deal with me than anybody else on the planet. Um, my dad didn't always have, you know, tact. My dad's form of joking why he never got me was because um, my dad would say jokes that weren't funny. Only funny to him and no one got. He might say something like, you know, and so this one time this lady went to the store to get the bread and the guys they said, I don't have bread today. And she's like, where, what else do you have? <laughs> you know, what else do you have? Ah, uh, fuck all of you, okay? Fuck <laughs> My dad swore a lot. A lot. My mom never swore. When I say that my mom never swore, I would only hear my mom swear in reference to things I had said when she had to necessarily repeat it. So he called Tammy a bitch, a dirty bitch who deserved something in her C word. Okay, right? He is grounded. Don't worry about it. Oh, this is the fifth time he's done it. And this is Tammy who, by the way, because I have a bunch of Tammies that he's abused. Um, actually, I'm just doing robocalls right now because there are so many kids, parents, I have to get back to. I am so sorry that he called your son um, a motherfucker. I, that's just, no, it's not appropriate. It's not, I don't like it at all. No, I'm going to beat him later. Seriously, if I believed in that, I would. If, right now, to God, I wish I believed in beating because maybe it would help him. <laughs> but my dad would swear a lot. And my mom would always wonder where, she thought I was learning it on the playground. I learned it, and my dad wasn't being a bad person or anything. My dad had the worst temper driving that I've ever seen in my entire life. I learned at six, seven years old that if you cut my dad off, he was going to call you, Dad, a cocksucker. Cut me off, a cocksucker. Go ahead. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> he would try to be good. My dad would scare the shit out of me because up until the time I was in my 20s, if you got up next to him and gunned your engine, he was racing you. And I would have to remind my dad that he was driving a fucking station wagon. Sometimes we're going up against a turbo car. Sometimes we had my cousin who was like my sister and my brother in the back seat. all of us who were terrified. I have cousins from Oklahoma to this day remember being terrified of driving with my father because we were going somewhere and someone cut him off. Okay, okay, what's the hardy bitch? What's the fucking hardy bitch? You too, motherfucker. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Children terrified of me just doing this shit. Me used to it. Me at this point, just like, it's gonna fucking go down. I don't know what. My dad had a short temper. My dad, more than one occasion, I remember getting out and kicking a car. <laughs> what? Don't you fucking honk at me. Don't fucking honk at me. You stay here. Don't move or you're grounded. Yeah, open the door. Open the door. My dad liked to kick a lot. Like, my dad didn't punch anything, really. Well, that's not necessarily true. But he kicked a lot. Like, not enough. I don't think he put dents in cars, but he kicked a lot of fucking cars and wanted to get in the fights. Like, that, I know this sounds so bad. Funny story. My mom would kill me if I told this story. But whatever. I think it's hilarious. One time, at my house, the cops came. And the police came, and I don't exactly know how... Maybe they traced through the plate or something. They were looking for a Mr. Uh, last name of me. Naturally, my mom's like, oh, God. Oh, my God. and my mom was handicapped. My mom was like, you know, paralyzed and stuff. Like, I had a lot going on. That poor woman went through so much. She was like, oh, my God. Necessarily, they, I mean, right away, they get me. They think it's me. The cops are there looking for somebody with that last name. It's for me. I'm shoved towards the front of the door. What? What? They're like, was he driving a certain car? And did he get out? I'm, I wasn't even driving at the point. I'm like, no. What? They're like, She's like, well, I'm sure he did something else. Take him anyway. But I remember my dad then going, okay, I fucking did it. What? What? He called the police like a pussy? Like a little fucking a pussy? He cried? Did I hurt his vagina? Did I? He didn't really say all that. But he was like, what? Guess I fucking did it. Turns out what my dad did was he was mad a cab driver had cut him off and then maybe gave him the finger. And I don't know if he tried to hit my dad or not. My dad thought the appropriate response to that, which 
actually, I still think is the appropriate response to that, is to get out of the car at the next light, walk over. Do you remember the thing called the club that you'd lock your steering wheel with? Yeah. He took that and broke the windshield out while he was in the car and then thought he was going to walk the fuck away and that nothing was going to happen. I guess in his old school mind, that was how he settled shit and police didn't get involved. But with me, if I did something remotely close to that, my dad was not going to have me, you know, do monkey see, monkey do. I was, if I gave the finger to another kid and my dad says, get your little ass inside, get your little ass inside, who do you fucking think you are? Who do you think you are? Don't you give me that. Don't talk it back to me. Oh, he's talking it back to me. My dad lost it so bad with me one time. It was the only time. My dad never hit me or did anything weird like that. My dad chased me from the basement all the way up into the room. I'm not sure what he was going to do. <laughs> But I remember being on his ass so much, being so annoying and so obnoxious and so horrible that he just lost it. He literally lost it, dropped whatever he was doing. Ah! <laughs> Chased me. I'm the fucking, like, I think he probably would have killed me. It would have been justified at that point. But, um, my, yeah, my, so a lot of times when I would make a joke that my brother thought was funny, even my mom would chuckle at about him. He didn't understand it, and he would always look at me, and he said this more than anything he ever said in his life to me. There's a something wrong with you. There's a something wrong with you. What's so funny? What's so funny? He never got anything that was funny. Like, literally, you could tell, like, I don't know, like, uh, somebody could slip on their ass right in front of you, end up in a puddle of tar for no apparent reason, even though there's no puddle of tar there, and start going out. There's a rock that went up my anus at the same time. I would be laughing. Other people would be laughing. My dad would look at us like we were fucking Martians and go, what's so funny? What's so funny? You have a problem. What's so wrong with you? You know, this is something screwy in your head. <laughs> you have to say that shit too. You know, you have a screwy in your head, okay? You have a screwy in your head. There's something wrong. You're crazy. Anybody ever tell you that? <laughs> yes. You on a daily basis told me that. Um, but at the same time, I know my dad cared deeply about me. I know my dad cared deeply about my brother because as much as me and him butted heads, which was a lot because he just, we were very different personality types. I remember one time, and I'm proud to tell this story. I was sitting with a friend who was black and I had a black friend. I was so cool. No, I was sitting on my porch and I was having problems with my neighbor. Some of it probably my own. I was not, a, like I said, not a good kid. Got that. Um, one of my neighbors really didn't like me, but he was also a racist. And, um, my friend was sitting with me on my front porch, which was a townhouse complex. We all kind of shared a courtyard. And I remember him coming up and telling my friend, because he was mad at me for some reason, to get out of the courtyard, get out of the seat that was next to me on my own porch and to get out of there because they didn't want any black bandits there. I'll never forget that as long as I live. And this is the eighties. This is like the mid eighties. And I remember being horrified and seeing how my friend who was black, how it deflated him, it dehumanized him. And listen, my dad had a lot to say about everybody, but I'll never forget my dad coming out of the house. I went in there and told him, you know, what he did. My dad, this was a friend of my dad's for a while. My dad took a deep breath, went outside and went up to this guy and said, what the fuck is your problem with my son and his friend now? What the fuck is your problem with my son and his friend now? And everyone else all around all the other neighbors shut the hell up. This particular neighbor had caught the ear of a woman who didn't like me. And she was out on her porch kind of instigating the whole thing. And he's like, it's not my fault you're going to listen to that fucking fat bitch over there. You say one more thing. One more thing about my son. I'm going to punch you in the motherfucking... <laughs> and this man, who was taller than my dad, bigger than my dad, shrunk to about this high. And... He said, he can sit there with his friends as long as he wants. His friend can sit there. You're not going to do a fucking shit. And this guy wasn't going to do a fucking shit. And never bothered me that way again. Never bothered my friend again. Um, was petrified of my father, as I was on several occasions. Um, yeah, and what I also admired the most about my dad was that in many instances where a lot of guys would leave, I mean, you've got kids who are having behavior problems because, you know... They've got their own little issues. Plus, you've got a wife who is so sick, who gets hit by a car, ends up paralyzed and with a host of issues that come with that and other things that come because you're immobile. Like, she had a stroke at 40. It was so horrible. Other men who would have run screaming, my dad never stopped loving my mom. My dad loved my mother so much it was insane. My dad stuck by her 
through hospitalizations, through, you know, and my dad would never, even I remember when my dad had Parkinson's toward the end. I don't know why I'm getting all serious. It's going to be depressing. And it was hard for him to walk and hard for him to move. My mom was in a coma. It was one of the seconds she had been in that she actually did come out of and was still lucid. Um, I was trying to wrangle working, visiting my mom, making sure he was okay at home when he had Parkinson's. At that point, he wasn't um, able to maneuver enough, walk around a good deal, and he'd been kind of deteriorating in some small ways. I'll never forget she got into a coma, had to be intubated again, and she was in the hospital. A strength came into my dad from somewhere I don't understand. And every day he would call me incessantly so much it drove me crazy at my job to make sure what time we were going to go visit my mom that day. And every day my dad was able to get into my car, walk without effort through the parking lot all the way up to my mom's room and be there with her. Dress himself and everything. Things that had gotten to be difficult suddenly were no longer difficult because he was running on some type of adrenaline and some type of love for my mom. And I don't know, just when I'm thinking about Father's Day, there are lots of good things I think about my father. I think about um, my father used to take me and my mom and everybody else, taught us to go cut our own Christmas tree down. Like we would actually go to a lot and get a real tree. Like I never had a big tree growing up. I didn't. We would go down there and my, it was, my dad would saw a tree. And that was something I looked forward to for every every year for some reason. I remember when my dad was driving a truck, him pulling up alongside me and me hopping in the truck and just being so proud to be with my dad. I remember when my dad would do jobs at movie theaters as a kid, once in a while he would bring me with him and I would get to go watch free movies while he worked on something that was wrong at the concession stands or stuff. But basically, I remember when push came to shove, my dad was there for me. I remember how funny he was. I remember how loving he was, and I remember how caring he was. I know this usually isn't the type of video I do on my channel, but I guess I just kind of wanted to memorialize him in some way and just let everybody know what a good guy he, he was. Oh, also why he thought he was Italian. His name was Vito, by the way. His actual name was Vidal, but everybody called him Vito. And I'll just leave you that. I had a cousin who for years used to threaten people whenever they would piss him off in another state by saying that if they kept fucking with them, fucking with him, he would call his uncle Vito in Chicago, which didn't sound too well. And usually he would scare the other person just by that ring alone. Your uncle Vito from Chicago. When he could prove he had an uncle Vito in Chicago, people didn't fuck with him. <laughs> that was the other thing that was funny about my dad was just random shit he would say. I mean, okay, I'll leave you off on a, what I think is a funny note. My dad didn't like Mexicans a lot some of the time he liked everybody but he had problems with every race for whatever reason his own whites everything but i remember thinking arguing this argument with my dad that never went anywhere we would he would somebody would piss him off some uh, a mexican would piss him off somewhere and he'd be like eh, it's a fucking mexican for you to fucking the wet back or oh, doing this fucking stupid shit get far get the job i have five you fucking lazy wet back i can't stand them people dad what you know you're mexican not like them I didn't float over here in the fucking door, okay? I'm not, no, no, not like them, not like them. <laughs> like what? Did he think all of them wore sombreros and did like the fucking maracas and shit? <laughs> I don't know what he was ever thinking about. I mean, he would, he would always, uh, he, I remember one street ended in um, ski, it was something ski street. And I, I said one day to my dad, I'm like, oh, why are we going down this, that, Klumsky Street or whatever. That's kind of weird. He's like, you know why it's called the Klumsky Street? That's a fucking Polak. No explanation to why that was needed to be added. None. Not whatsoever. But I just love, and another thing, my dad spoke perfect, well, not perfect Spanish. There's a debate about that. My dad spoke and understood Spanish. My best friend, who was Puerto Rican, did not believe me. I'd known this guy for like eight years at that point. I mean, we met like 13 or 14, I was 17 or 18 when I told him, no, my, you know my dad's Spanish. No, your dad's fucking Italian. No, 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 I'm not Italian. He's not Italian. My dad's Spanish and he understands Spanish. No, he doesn't. Your dad never fucking speaks Spanish at all. You're fucking full of shit. You're just, why are you lying? You're such full of shit. I said, okay, here's what you do. Catch him off guard. Say something or ask him something quick in Spanish, he'll answer you. Fine. I said, anything. He did. My dad answered him in Spanish and was like, fuck, he knows. <laughs> and my friend was just utterly shocked and did the thing that ever, asked the question everybody else always asked me, like, why did your father never teach you Spanish if he knows Spanish? I don't fucking know. What I was told was that he was never secure 
in his Spanish. I think he spoke fucking Russian, Japanese, fucking, you know, uh, probably, you know, from Sub-Saharan African or some shit like that. I think he knew a lot. But that was what I was told. What I think, it's my own selfish opinion, is that he never taught me Spanish because he didn't want me to know the bad words that he was always saying. <laughs> That's what I think. But he never used Spanish around me, which was weird. And maybe that was instilled in him by his family. Like, maybe they really pushed English or whatever. But they would all... Actually, no, they didn't. It was like a bunch of fucking Italians when they all got together. I didn't hear a lot of Spanish, so that is true. But my dad didn't know Spanish, and everybody didn't believe me that my father could speak the Spanish. And knew it. He didn't like speaking it. I remember that. The, the look of pain that would come on his face when, you know, somebody Hispanic would come up to him, and he was... Okay, do you know English? English. Por favor, English. And they would have to speak Spanish to him. Come and sit and talk like Telemundo. Yes. He would answer in Spanish. I'd be sitting there. What? <laughs> what? Don't look at me. I don't know much, okay? I no comprende. Shit, that's wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, he would bitch a lot about a lot of people. But my dad was a great guy. I miss my father a hell of a lot. And yeah. I just thought I'd do a little story time and share. Now off to look for, you know, some topic to forget about all the sadness and everything and, you know, maybe make people laugh a little bit. Time to check Twitter. Something's going to piss me off. Hope this made some kind of sense. All right.